classical reality is the reality of the objects, the moving space and time, uh, microscopic objects, how microscopic depends, and we can explore that. But fundamentally, it is what actually our body perceives and then transforms that perception into feelings, comprehension, and so on. But our body cannot perceive quantum objects. In fact, no instrument can actually perceive directly quantum objects. Quantum objects are actually states of fields that interact with the field of an instrument and create a classical information, classical event that then we call the particle. But the particle, an, an electron, is really a state of the field. And the field is not a defined in space and time, though it creates events in space and time. So quantum physics studies the very small, but even more importantly, studies elements of realities which are coherent. For example, a laser light is a macroscopic event in the sense that it has, is made of huge number of photons, but those photons are, are all coherent. And so it's actually a macroscopic quantum event. Most quantum events are microscopic, but there are many, for example, a Bose-Einstein condensate is made of a huge number of atoms in this case, or molecules, and, and it is a uh, quantum system. So quantum and classical are actually uh, coexisting in this physical reality. And if you take information, which is at the level of the fields, like the state of the fields, then I call that information that is those particles, those elements of reality, which are manifested in space and time. I call that live information to distinguish that from quantum information and from classical information. Mm -hmm. So this definition, to my knowledge, I'm the first to make because it's important, because it's a type of information which is straddles between quantum and classical information. So, for example, an atom of hydrogen is a coherent combination of an electron and a proton. And it has properties because of its coherence, because it's a quantum coherence, its properties are completely different than the sum of the properties of classical and quantum. A live information, therefore, is an interesting idea because uh, quantum physics describes quantum states. The quantum states cannot be described in space and time. They can actually they need a multidimensional space, it's called Hilbert space. But even more importantly, the dimensions of this space are complex numbers. They're not real numbers. I'm here, therefore, there has to be a real space. And so uh, those quantum properties rely on this quantumness, which is a very elusive property because these quantum states, the components of the vectors that express a quantum state do not represent a physical object or a property of a physical object. They represent the probability. In fact, it's called a probability amplitude, which then allows you to compute something that might happen in space and time. So quantum physics does not describe objects in space and time like classical physics, but describes only what we can know about a quantum object in the sense that its evolution of this state, of this quantum state in Hilbert space, which then will allow us to compute the probabilities of what you might measure in space and time. It will not tell you generally what you will measure. It only tells you the probability of what you can measure. And that's crazy in a sense, right? Because classical objects, you can actually describe the trajectory. So that at any point in time, you can tell position, movement, and so on, but not for quantum, quantum systems. So, so this fundamental difference, well, we'll see that is essential to describe why a consciousness and free will must be, must be quantum phenomena. They cannot be described in real terms and with the dimensions in which we normally understand the classical reality.
the worldview today uh, that is prevalent is uh, the physicalist or the materialist mm. worldview, which of course a materialistic worldview requires also a reductionism. In other words, science can only solve problems by breaking up the problem into parts that interact with each other and produces a phenomenon that you will explain. Well, that works extremely well with the classical physics because the objects of classical physics are these particles, atoms, and molecules that are organized, that are disorganized. There is a collection of disorganized live symbols, and let's call them, right? In other words, uh, objects that are quantum in nature, but uh, their quantumness cancels out in the randomness of their assemblage. And remember, quantum physics it only gives you the probabilities of what will appear or the particles that appear. So when you have a thought of them, when you average those probabilities, you have classical objects that behave deterministically. Deterministic means that the next state of that object is perfectly computable from the previous state through a transformation, which is one-to-one, -one, just like a computer. The transformation of the computer is called an instruction, and you take the state that the instruction works on, it produces the next state, and that state is deterministic. There is no way to escape that. So in a classical system, free will cannot exist. And so, but the prevalent idea today among physicists is that quantum theory is just a mathematical theory that is useful to compute what you can measure in space and time. So reality is given only to what happens in space and time. There is no reality given to the quantum states of these mathematical objects that help figure out what happens in space and time. What, what I'm saying, on the other hand, is that no, the quantum reality is really a deeper reality out of which space and time reality emerges, but it is real. In fact, it's even more real than what we can measure in space and time and witness the fact that Quantum computers cannot compute in space and time what they do. They actually have to compute it somewhere else, and nobody knows where that computation is done. So I'm saying that computation is done in this vaster reality, which we have to explore. I mean, we have to say it has to be there, but the, and we cannot say much now until we explore it. And by the way, how can we explore that? We consciousness. Consciousness is the perfect instrument to explore the inner reality, which is exactly what we have been done all our lives. <laughs> when we think and when we understand the meaning and so on, we are actually doing that in that quantum reality. We are not doing that in the brain. That's the consequence of this new view, that the brain is a physical structure in space and time where there is no consciousness per se. It's attached, okay, because it's made of particles and particles are states of the fields that cannot be separated from the field. See, that's another important notion that quantum physics has brought up, is that we were thinking of electrons as objects, you know, up until recently, until the 50s and 60s. But then we realized that no, that the electron is not an object, it's a state of the field, it's an excited state of the field. In other words, in this new understanding with this CIP theory, CIP way of looking, then an excited state of the field is actually a symbol that the field emits in space and time to communicate what it wants to communicate, a meaning that it feels within the state itself, which is its conscious state, is the symbol used to communicate the meaning that it wants to communicate. So. So all of a sudden, we see that also the information has now uh, three aspects. The quantum state is the analog or is the representation of a conscious experience of qualia. So it represents qualia, the feelings and sensations that we have about having observed some symbolic reality. The symbols that are observed by the field are the live information, and the live information is what I mentioned earlier, basically quantum entities in space and time. 
no quantum fields, quantum states, which are not in space and time, but the excited states of the fields, that's the live information. Classical information, on the other hand, is what a body, a physical body, which is a quantum and classical structure, can observe in this reality, which is quantum and classical, this physical reality is quantum and classical, but we can only see the classical symbols. We cannot see the live symbols, but our cells can transform the classical information that is produced by the senses and the brain into inner live information within the machinery of the cell, which is what the conscious field actually observes to transform into its feelings, into this, mm. in, its, into its qualia. And qualia in this theory is simply the entry point into the inner world. Qualia are actually the bringers of comprehension and meaning. So comprehensions and meaning come as in an in, in inner production of the conscious field. It doesn't happen from the outside. It happens within the field. And there, there will be new physics, new physics that nobody has ever suspected or few have suspected, because how do we go from qualia to comprehensions and meaning? Qualia is the entry point to the inner sanctum of meaning. 